Welcome to this video on arguments in thesis and research writing. Academic knowledge is contested. This means that not everyone agrees on the meanings of ideas, concepts, perspectives, processes and approaches. Social justice, for example, will have different meanings for different people. The different meanings won't always be in direct opposition, but might have slight variations or subtle changes. Positioning yourself within these different meanings and aligning yourself with others is a key part of academic writing. And the way we do this in writing is by developing arguments. At home around the dinner table, you can voice your opinion and argue in any way you like. But in academic contexts, arguments contain specific elements. The most basic elements of an argument are a reasoned claim and evidence. The evidence is very important because providing evidence elevates your point of view from unsubstantiated opinion to reasoned argument. Here's how a basic argument works. You make a claim. Which is a point of view, what you believe, what you suppose. You provide reasons for the claim from observations from other writers. And this is why you believe the claim. You then provide evidence, which is the research data, examples from examples that might support your claim. So let's have a look at an, an example here. Running improves longevity, that's the claim. Many people who are fit and healthy run, so that's a reason for the claim. Studies X and Y have shown that running improves health, that would provide the evidence. Well there's nothing wrong with this argument, you may already be thinking I ran for years, now I have problems with my knees and can barely walk. Or I have problems with my heart, is it healthy for me to run? So you can see that for arguments to be convincing, they need to incorporate more complexity. Most academic writing has additional components to an argument. And one example is the Toulmin argument. Stephen Toulmin was a British philosopher writing in the 1950s, and he developed a structure for arguments that I think is very useful. So here's the Toulmin argument. The first point is the claim, and that's the point of view, what you believe, what you suppose. Then comes the warrant, which is the connection between the claim and evidence, and the reasons why the evidence supports the claim. Then of course comes the evidence, and this is the support for your argument in the form of, form of published research, data, or examples. Next comes the backing. This is the logical reasoned evidence that supports the warrant. We may still question the validity of the claim and the backing provides additional information. This may involve a buildup of evidence specifying assumptions or explaining delimitations. Then comes a very important part, the rebuttal or counter arguments. And this acknowledges the possibility of objections to the claim. The qualifier is qualifying your argument where you note that you've listened to the counter-argument and you've modified your claim in order to accommodate that. So let's have a look at examples here. The claim is running improves longevity. The warrant is many people who run live longer and research supports this claim, so that links the claim to the evidence. The evidence research shows that running 5 to 10 minutes a day, low intensity running, is enough to extend life by several years and there's a source. The backing is that um, 
running results in a range of health benefits that could improve longevity. And there's more information to help convince the reader. The rebuttal is, but many people who run have heart attacks or suffer overuse injuries. And the qualifier is, if one gets regular medical checkups, follows a program suitable to age and ability, wears appropriate clothing, running can improve longevity. So you can see the argument is now qualified to take into account the rebuttal and it is a much more convincing argument. Academic arguments often include counter arguments because by doing this the writer acknowledges the existence of other points of view and other arguments. This shows a sense of balance and reason in the argument rather than a closed off one sided claim. In a thesis particularly, you will make many types of arguments, small arguments as well as the big, large arguments. For example, and these are just two examples here, you will be making arguments of definition, particularly in the literature review. What do the key concepts I'm using in this thesis mean? For our example, we would say, what do I mean by longevity? What do I mean by running? You might also make arguments of evaluation, and you would do this in the literature review. Lee's study is valid because that's an argument. So here's some tips to get you going in terms of thinking of your arguments. I would say write down all the arguments you can think of in a chapter or in your thesis overall. Create a mind map and brainstorm. And then look at the arguments and decide which ones you, go, you want to develop. And write those on index cards and add evidence to provide support for each claim. And don't forget to include the rebuttal or the counter-argument. So in this video, what we've tried to show is that positioning yourself and aligning yourself with others is a key part of academic writing. And the way we do this in writing is by developing arguments. The most basic elements of an argument are a reason, claim and evidence. But the Toulmin argument provides us with complexity. Thank you for watching this video on arguments in thesis and research writing.